So I'm going to talk about uh, sprawl destruction. Like I'm just going to read the whole slide there, but it's how um, BGW has evolved Terraform over roughly about five to six years, and uh, how we've scaled that. So this is me. Uh, so Bruce Dominguez. So I'm the head of site reliability at VGW. So if you've not heard or know of VGW, so uh, we are a, um, an Australian-based team, uh, company. So based in Perth, but we've got offices all around uh, the around Europe and, and US. But we're an interactive entertainment company where we harness technology and creativity to deliver world-class free-to-play games that um, delight over one million. Uh, North American players, not scripted at all. Um, so I'm a previous HashCorp ambassador, so uh, for the last, a couple of years. Um, also the hug leader, so HashCorp user group leader in Perth, and a fanboy for uh, Hash, HashCorp products for about six years. Starting with Vagrant, actually. Started with Vagrant and then on to Terraform. I'm going to start with a short uh, backstory, so it just gives you an idea of like our scope of Terraform. So as I mentioned before, we've been using Terraform for about five years to uh, manage uh, our cloud infrastructure. But it wasn't the only tool that was used. So we had CloudFormation, SDKs, um, we had pockets of Pulumi or Pulumi, um, and of course we had some click ops. You know, we won't talk about that. Um, we matured our usage of Terraform, well, using the Terraform binary, often with a, like a, with a Docker image, with an S3 backend state, and then we migrated over to Terraform Cloud. But the way we scaled our usage was using, um, by just adding more and more Terraform orgs back in the day. Um, just by the way, like this, the, the whole presentation is, is used by Canva, so like I'm just inspired by Canva, <laughs> not, as, not, as, uh, not as flashy as I was, but we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Um, so uh, we started our journey in 2019, so we, did it, we had a competitive POC, or a proof of concept, of multiple IAC tools so that we could coalesce on which tool that the organization would, would land on. Um, the main opponents were Terraform and Pulumi. Unfortunately, uh, Pulumi won the battle, but eventually Terraform would win the war, so that, which is really good, why I'm standing here. Um, later the year, we had one team uh, adopt Terraform on the side. That was my team at the time, um, uh, just to, to use uh, uh, an S3 backend as our state. Teams started to uh, see the good work that we were doing and started adopting Terraform as well. So we started building that momentum. And in 2019, when Terraform Cloud was uh, introduced, we had a single team um, become early adopters of that technology, which is my team as well, um, with great success. But as we started to do that, other teams began to migrate away from CloudFormation, look at the good work that we were doing, and migrate to Terraform Cloud, and off CloudFormation and off Pulumi eventually. Um, but as we grew, we, we, we were getting more and more requests to have access or get access to Terraform Cloud. But we were running into problems pretty quickly. We, with every new team, as I mentioned before, we spawned a new org. Um, now, this is because teams wanted to isolate their workloads. They wanted to isolate their runs, so they didn't want to have concurrency issues. But also, they wanted to isolate their state, so they didn't want to share any sensitive outputs or outputs to other teams. And because of this, we had such an explosion of Terraform orgs. Just every single team had their own org. It was a lot. And with this organic adoption, um, we began to slow down the rate that we could service those requests. So um, with every request, we would have to renegotiate the contract. So this is before uh, RUM, uh, resources under management. Um, we would have to rene renegotiate the contract. So we'd have to estimate the number of runs they would be using, the number of admin users they needed. Um, and then we'd have to go through a procurement process, which generally will take around about eight to 12 weeks. So quite a, a, a leeway. Oh dear. 
<laughs> it was that good, right? <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Jeez, don't press that button again. All right. <laughs> now that, oh, yeah, there we go. Um, and uh, as we started to scale our, um, our usage of Terraform, so, you know, not only did we have to run the, the procurement gauntlet, so eight to 12 weeks for each new team, um, we were getting more and more requests, which meant our backlog for servicing those requests were, were going, was ever growing, sorry. Um, we also um, had a decentralized structure, which meant lack of standards, governance, um, and inconsistencies of approaching how we use Terraform across the organization. Um, on that one, cool. Uh, and with new orgs, uh, with every new org that was created, we had an overhead to track a black screen um, to to, attra to attract. Uh, sorry, we had, with every new org that was created, we had to um, the overhead of to track. You know the number of runs they were doing, uh, how many access uh, admin access they were they were using, because uh, all it had cost implications every time we had to renegotiate because admin users were expensive. So we we needed to move faster. We needed to stop the sprawl of orgs. We needed a mechanism to allow teams to onboard easily and with less overhead and guide the engineers into the pit of success. So there had to be a better way. So a better way to reduce the friction of onboarding Terraform without needing a purchase order. We needed to, we needed to reduce the explosion of Terraform orgs to, and to make the management of that much, much easier. We need to continue to maintain a strong um, and consistent security posture uh, within the organization and establish a, a way for teams to easily onboard with a streamlined pi pipeline for deployments, uh, which allows much quicker adoption. There we go. So our first step was to eliminate the eight to 12 week waiting period for teams to use Terraform. So we wanted to reduce the, the time to Terraform. You can tell I'm a, an SRE, I, I build acronyms, TTT. Time to Terraform. That should stick, hopefully, after this. So our problem of our ever-growing uh, orgs, or the number of orgs we had, was that we had so many org owners. So each team had a, an owner. So we would have to, as I said before, estimate for every new request or every new team, uh, un understand how many runs they were needed, um, their assumed usage. But with that, we also had to go back and speak to all of the existing owners and coordinate with them around have they been using or rebalanced some of their usage for runs and admin users. So that was a headache. And because of we and because of each org on the team, so each org owned its own team, we lacked consistency. We lacked um, uh, a lot of ways for how they were managed, which meant each team would um, or let's see, sorry, some teams would have Everyone has admin owners. So if you had access, you, have, you had admin, which is not ideal, but that led to cost growth because each admin users was an additional cost. And or you had some, some other groups or other teams with a single uh, admin user, which led to operational issues when they were on leave or no one could get hold of them. And we had an explosion of private registries, which led to duplication of, of uh, registries. Also uh, across the org, we, we saw single-use modules that you know, didn't scale past a single team or a single purpose. So we needed to keep it, keep, so we need to make the complicated less complicated or, or keep it simple. So we began the creation of a, a single VGW org. Um, with the, the single org, we could simplify the management and cost of running Terraform Cloud within VGW, as well as give uh, engineers a far simpler path to onboard and kicking them into the pit of success. It would improve our security and governance of Terraform Cloud, because we, instead of having multiple orgs, we'd have a single org that we could concentrate on, and also give us a much simpler RBAC model with the flexibility to grow. And it also gave us the opportunity to um, have a single uh, registry or private registry that we could use as a, a dangling carrot for teams to use so that we could publish new modules to that registry and act as an incentive for the teams to, to jump on board. But we still wanted to make sure that the teams had autonomy. We wanted to make sure we wanted to give them uh, enough space but, but, but not be too prescriptive. 
So we gave uh, the teams the ability to provision their own workspaces through a management workspace that they could control, um, but eventually just uh, allowing them to, to scale and, sorry, not allowing them to um, deviate too far. So we leveraged the, the, the project's function or feature from Terraform Cloud. That was introduced, I think, last year. Um, this feature allowed the, the teams to, well, allowed us to create tenants within the single org to, um, to, in such a way that we could isolate or keep those isolated from other tenants. So that meant that projects were effectively their own org. And that meant teams could manage their own workspaces, but also ensure that no state was leaking outside of their project or org, um, unless it was explicitly permitted to do so. So we had the structure. Now we needed to reduce that friction uh, to adopt and make teams' lives much easier. I'm blitzing ahead. I'll slow down. Um, so we leaned heavily on automation and golden mo modules for bootstrapping of projects and teams with new org uh, uh, for the sorry projects and teams for the new org through orchestration. We also vended uh, dynamic OIDC uh, authentication credentials for uh, well basically to remove the need for long lived credentials so teams wouldn't have to worry about that. And we established a pattern for the right way to create workspaces, so giving them the tools for that success so that they can easily adopt um, and also be secure. So we did this through GitHub. So we, we have a central repository that manages our Terraform org. And with that, we can uh, vend a Teams project for them, to, for them to use, a magic workspace so that they can create their own workspaces. So we don't really care about that. They can do what they want. Um, and also, um, an interactive login so that they can log into the UI and CLI, because they need access, um, and create three service accounts that uh, can be used for the CI pipelines to provision infrastructure. We also then take those tokens and store those securely in AWS Secrets Manager. I wish it was Vault, but it's not. <laughs> um, securely in Secrets Manager, and so they can be programmatically retrieved when they need to. So what we did with those three service accounts that we created, we made sure that they, they had very specific scopes for their usage. So we have a plan service account that is only ever allowed to create a, a speculative runs for pull, on pull requests. So only allowed, does, can't apply, just uh, does plans. It could read state outputs from workspaces so that the teams can use them. We also have an apply for non-prods. So it allows you to do a plan and apply for um, only dev workspaces or dev test workspaces and so nothing prod. So that's scoped to that. And then we also have a, a, an apply prod, which is basically the same, but only for production workspaces. So we've isolated that from there. So a apply non-prod cannot read anything that's in a prod workspace. By scoping these service accounts, we, um, we for a specific purpose and a, a specific environment here, we ensure that the appropriate guidelines or guardrails are in place for the teams to use. So again, kick them in the pit of success. Next, uh, we made improvements on the CI-CD pipeline. Um, we simplified the process of retrieving the API tokens needed to communicate with Terraform Cloud. So we have um, a workflow that authenticates uh, to AWS via OADC, grabs um, an SDS token that is uh, scoped to a specific secret um, and is pulled from Secrets Manager. And that token, or sorry, those credentials are then used to then authenticate to Terraform Cloud. So making sure that we've got a very secure pipeline there. And by vending and storing these secrets, uh, or tokens centrally, uh, we ensure the tokens are not scattered across uh, as environment variables in CI pipelines, um, enhancing our security and maintainability. Um, for those who did, so who had Circle CI, still have Circle CI with the um, issues where we had to rotate the, the credentials. That was fun. At the beginning of the last year, I think it was. Um, we also introduced some several uh, GitHub actions to improve the quality of life for engineers. So, um, like 
that workflow I, I showed earlier on, we wrapped it up into an, uh, a GitHub action. So teams don't even have to think about it anymore. They just use the GitHub action and off they go. Uh, we also introduced static analysis tools or tests for pull requests. So we do an FMT, a validate, a uh, TFLint, a checkoff, just to ensure that we've got good, co good code quality and consistency. Um, we additionally wrapped up the API-driven runs um, uh, using the HashiCorp TFC uh, workflow GitHub action. So we've wrapped that up. Um, and then we introduced a workflow to write that back, or the outcomes of a plan back to the PR. So you can see there, so you can see like what's changing um, and click on view if you want to see what those changes are. But we also put a lot of effort into improving documentation and how-to guides. So we set up the teams for success so they, they know what they're doing. So we did step-by-step -step guides on how to provision a new tenant and project. Uh, we also did set up um, guides to set up a CI CD pipeline, so using the new GitHub actions and workflows, and how they contribute to the central private registry that we have now, and also publishing to that as well. So um, making sure that we, we're, we're trying to foster that, that culture of con uh, contributing. But it's, it's no good if, if um, we do all this work um, and no one knows about it, right? So it's, um, we need to ensure that we successfully land this change by over-communicating. So we did skill shares on why we're moving to a single org and what those benefits were. Um, we did regular updates um, to teams on progress of the, of the work we were doing, sneak peeks into the new modules and automation. Um, we also... Um, through relationships, we, we, we got trusted teams, teams to migrate over to the new org, which um, became change champions and, and uh, advocates for what we were doing. And we also did fortnightly showcases to the, the broader uh, engineering uh, community, so they had the awareness of what we were doing. There we go. Um, so, with all that work, uh, we did achieve some, some great results um, across those areas around you know, TT, uh, time to Terraform improved, TM, um, simplified structure and made it easier as well. So we improved it, the time it takes to onboard new teams into Terraform now from 12 weeks, which is pro actually probably a little bit more actually for if, if, if um, uh, legal get involved. Um, and uh, to, to roughly, or well, less than 12 minutes. So it's just a pull request now. So teams can just get their, their tenants straight away. There we go. Um, by simplifying the org, we're in a position now to um, scale our usage of Terraform. So no matter how many teams we have, we can scale out that usage. Um, we've got a much simpler uh, management of, or sim gives us a, a much simpler management of our Terraform cloud, so across multiple orgs. So imagine having to manage you know, 20 to 30 uh, orgs. That is a nightmare. So now we've got one. Also allows us to a much uh, clearer picture on our costs and our spend. So instead of having to do reports on every single org, we now can just do it on one, which, let me tell you, that's far simpler. We now made it easier for teams to adopt Terraform uh, with the paved roads automations I mentioned earlier, for which reduced the friction um, for engineers to start with Terraform. So that cognitive load is gone now gone. We've baked in security best practices so that um, they just get that for free. They don't have to think about it anymore. Am I doing the right thing? No, you are now because you don't have to think about it. And we published new modules only in that BGW org so that um, we've got that dangling carrot. So all the, the shiny, brand new uh, modules that have got all the new tech, if you, wanna, if you wanna use them, you have to migrate. So what's next? Well, I mean, we're far from, <coughs> excuse me, we're far from finished, right? So uh, we've been doing this journey for about eight months now, almost nine, um, but we're onboarding new teams every day. And we've, we've still got a fair chunk of uh, existing orgs to, to fold in. Um, we still have some rough edges, though, that I, I want to fix. 
um, to address and improve um, the onboarding experience for teams. So we want to integrate the automation that we have done into our internal developer platform. Um, and as, as we've seen, like the um, the uh, maturity model uh, spoke earlier on. Uh, I want to move us from uh, you know to, to stage three of that maturity model of scaling. So you know all that self service, um, and also potentially look at. Um, the new features that are coming down the pipeline, the Terraform stacks is something that um, I'd like to look into, and what that impact is on our current um, workspace structure, and how we can kind of manage that and manage and leverage that in the future. It's good that it's pausing because I can't press. There we go. <laughs> um, so I grabbed some stats. Uh, end of May, I think it was, uh, when I did the presentation. Um, so you know, we've got um, 45 projects that we've created so far, um, and it's growing, so it would have grown by now, actually, um, with 345 workspaces. So still a small amount, but we're, we're growing. Um, we've onboarded four new teams recently, um, and we've published 15 private modules. And, and one of those modules, actually, has been downloaded around 13,000 times already. Um, would have been way more now after. Uh, come June, and that's it. You survived. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my story, guys. Thank you very much, Brooke. Thank you.